and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me come on let's pray This is how I fight. It's in worship. It's in the presence of the Lord. And also, during that time, I'm going to be praying over all of the, the things, the visions, and everything that we're going to have written in this book here. So just remember, at any time, you can come. You can actually, um, I saw somebody do this on Sunday. They just came and laid hands on that 
book while we were praying over it. And I was like, amen, that is awesome because we're going to agree together over these things. If you want to come update something in the book or write down anything, we're just picking a page uh, for this year to write down things over our family, over our situations that we know God is going to bring deliverance. And we're going to sing through in that victory today. Amen. As we sing this song. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight.
Let's just worship it right now. When the heart is on the fire Another way when the walls are closing in and When I look at the space between Where I used to be in this reckoning I know I will never be alone It was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire
name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come with me in this space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be Anybody going through a battle right now? Have you felt defeated? I feel like there's somebody right now that's going through some stuff and you just felt like it's over. You maybe felt like Job in that one moment. I'm telling you right now, there's somebody here that needs to count the joy because God's got your victory. How many of you know that? Woo! Come on, let's, just, let's give a shout to God because he's got the, back, the victory right now. Count the joy in every Give a victory shout right now. And praise is God. We praise even the more we see it. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're a man of your own. How's everybody doing this evening? I want to remind you about the book of remembrance. If you haven't already written what you believe in God for in the book, be sure and do that. Um, I, have, I have already been seeing, I wrote down some really big stuff because I was like, hey, if God's doing this thing, let's just go all in. And I wrote down some really big stuff that God's like, you serious? You know, but I got that in there. 
and God's already working those things out. And um, so it's just in, incredible when God gives us practical ways to see him move. You know, God's done so many things. You know, that's the whole point of giving testimonies is, you know, we look back and we see everything that God has done for us in the past. And we recount those things. But a lot of times we forget, don't we? And so this, this book is going to go down in the archives of the year that God turned everything around. And so I want to encourage you to take advantage of that if you haven't already. So um, y'all, y'all know in 2 Kings where um, the prophet, it says that the prophet was on his deathbed. And uh, the king came to the prophet and he said, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. What had happened before that is he had been defeated so much there was hardly anything left of the military. It had been dwindled down to nothing. And now their connection with God at that time was dying. And it was a really scary time for him. And we know the story where the prophet took his hands and and put him on the king's hands. And they shot an arrow out the window together. And, And then he said, now take the arrows. And I know we talked about this already, but he said, now take the arrows and strike the ground. So he said, when he shot the arrow with him, he said, you know, God is going to deliver the king of Aram into your Aram, into your hands. And then he said, strike the ground. But you can imagine he didn't go over there and help him strike the ground. He stood back and he said, now you strike the ground. And the king was obedient and he struck the ground three times. But the prophet was angry. That's what it says. The prophet was angry. He said, you should have struck the ground at least six or seven times. And so some of us, we look around and we find ourselves diminished, if you will. And, and we're, we're afraid and we feel closed in by the enemy. But God, the, God is telling you this evening to take the arrows in your hand. And I believe this is a prophetic word for, for tonight. Take the arrows in your hand and strike it with all you've got. Why? Because you have a word from the Lord. When you have a word from the Lord, don't waste it. Use it for everything that it's worth. So tonight, I want to encourage you. Hey, y'all, y'all stand up with me really quick. Stand up with me. I hear a lot of grunting. I know it's Tuesday. But y'all made it this far. Y'all came to church on a Tuesday night. You might as well get all, get all you can. Uh, everybody take the arrows in your hand and strike the ground. Strike it again. Tonight, guys, strike the ground with the arrows. Strike as many times as you need to. Because here's the thing. The prophet said, now you're only gonna, your enemy is only going to be defeated three times. He said it could have been, he could have been defeated six or seven times until he was totally annihilated. If I would have known, if he would have known that, don't you think that he would have wore those arrows out? But you got to trust when God gives you a word, there's power in the word. But it comes through your passion for what God has for you. So let's pray tonight. We're going to take up a quick love offering, Brother Porter. We're so excited on a Tuesday night to have Brother Jerry Porter with us. Uh, I've been watching this, the live streams from Camden. He was there uh, the last two days, and he's with us tonight and tomorrow night. So get everybody to come tomorrow night, and, uh, and it's just going to be an incredible night. So let's pray over this offering. Father, I just thank you, God, Lord, that as we invest in your kingdom, You invest in us, Lord, that we are in covenant with you, not just through our obedience, but through our passion, Lord. And we know that you're going to do something awesome tonight, and we are all in. So tonight, Father, we give sacrificially to this ministry to open, if nothing else, to open our hearts so that everything that you have for us can pour in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if our ushers will come, we're going to go ahead and take up our special offering tonight. And uh, as soon as they get a little bit around, I'm going to go ahead and, all right. You have, by the way, you have a red, white, and blue envelope there if you need to use that and, uh, for, your, for your offering. I'm going to give you all a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and introduce this figure. I don't want to delay him anymore. We're a little bit behind schedule, so I don't want to take any more of his time. So if you all will, can you all stand and give an applause for Brother Jerry Porter. One more time. Say one more time. For Brother Jerry Porter as he comes and brings the word tonight. 
Come on, real quick. Bless the Lord, will you? That is by the clapping of your hands, the opening of your mouths. Come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Come on, how many people in here love the Lord for real? We're not just talking about it, we're about it. Come on, I said, how many of you love the Lord for real? Come on, how many of you love him for real? Hallelujah. Amen. On your way down to your seat, will you hug about two or three people and say, I'm excited about your future? Come on, tell them I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about your future. Is this on? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Amen. I'm on. I'm going to put this right here. Test it one, two. Lift those hands real quick. I just want to do this. say that again. You are my strength. Oh yes you are. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me. In the power of your name, you lift me up. You lift me up. He does it over and over and over again. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up. Lift me up. You say it all aloud. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me Throw your hands up and just love on them for a few moments. It's a sweet spirit in here.
a sweet spirit in here. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Glory, God, is what our hearts long for. Overcome by your presence. Love. Say, hold. who we want to come. Come on, Holy Spirit. That's who we want to come. Come on, I said, Holy Spirit, I dare you to welcome them on in. Come on, I said, Holy Spirit. That's who we want to come in the room. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on, we can't do nothing without you. We can't move without you. It's in you that we live. It's in you that we move. It's in you that we have our being. Come, Lord, come. Come, Lord, come. Oh, come. I'm sorry, there's a worshiper coming out of me. Oh, come. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need you to come. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's something about praise, there's something about worship that just invites him into the room. Come on, I heard the song say, it's another one in the fire with me. I don't know what your fire may be. I, I don't know what river you have it to cross, but it's another one in there with you. And his name is Jesus. Come on, I said his name is Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. Come on, oh, how we love you. Oh, how my hearts love you. I dare somebody to just break in his presence. Oh, how my heart loves you, Lord. I can't move without you. I'll go crazy if I don't have your presence. Whatever you do, Lord, don't take your presence away from me. I'm hungry for more of you, Lord. For more, I'm hungry for more, I'm hungry for more, I'm hungry for more. Oh yes, I am. If you're standing near someone, I want you to hold their hand real quick. Grab the hand of the one that you hold next to. Grab their hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to hold that hand because you're holding the hand of what a miracle feels like. You're holding the hand of what a breakthrough feels like. I don't know your story. I don't need to know. But I know if you're standing in this room, after all of 2020 and all of 2021, all of 2022, and for you to be in 2023, I know you are a miracle. You are a living, breathing, tangible miracle. Come on, I need you to bless God for the hand that you're holding. Bless God. Oh, yeah, your share. Come on, bless the Lord for that miracle. Come on, bless the Lord for that blessing. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been consumed of my enemy. If it had not been for the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord. Oh, if it had not been for him. If it had not been for him, you could be reading my obituary. If it could not, if it had not been for him, you could have been reading about me in the newspaper. You could have been seeing my face over the news. But thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto the Lord. Oh, shandala bakarda bato shetele biasia. Oh, 
Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. <laughs> oh, you've been faithful to me even when I wasn't faithful to you. Lord, you're so faithful. You haven't changed on me yet. Even when I go through my changes and I go through my mood swings, you have remained consistent. You have remained the same. You have remained faithful. remains faithful and for that we give him glory and for that we give him so much praise I'm not waiting on my neighbor to praise him I'm gonna do it all by myself because I know what he's done for me I know the ways he has made for me I know what he has brought me through I know the trials he has seen me through I know the mountains he's brought me over if nobody else praise him I'll praise him all the days of my life so we just love him how do I just love him I don't know your age I don't know how long you've been alive but he's been faithful every single day of your life from the day you came out of your mother's womb from the day you were conceived to this very moment you have experienced the faithfulness of God you have experienced the fullness you have experienced the goodness of God if nobody owes him praise you have to make it up in your mind if nobody else praise God I'll be that one that will praise him I'll be that one that will praise him won't no rock crowd in my place come on won't no rock crowd in my place I'm not gonna let a rock crowd in my stead I'm, I'm going to give him what he's due I'm going to give him what he deserves I'm going to give him what he's owed hallelujah Come on, I dare you for the next 15 seconds to open your mouth and bless them real loud. Come on, bless them like you really mean it. Bless them out of your own belly. Bless them out of your own belly. Come on, I said bless them out of your own spirit. Out of your own belly, let the rivers flow. Out of your own belly, let the rivers flow. We're about to move, we're about to move, but praise and worship is very important for conditioning your heart for the word of God. It conditions you for what the Lord has to say. That's why that is very important. Come on, I need y'all to open your hearts up to receive whatever it is the Lord want to pour out. Come on, I don't even know all that God wants to do tonight, but I know he's up to something. Oh, he's up to something. You don't even understand what this praise this praise right here, this worship you're giving him, this loving on him that you're giving him. Look, we're not asking for nothing. We, we don't want anything. We're not asking for no blessings. We just want to be in his presence. We just want to bask in his presence. We, we just want to love on the one that loved us. I just want to love on you, Jesus. I just want to love on you. Every fire I have found myself in. That song blessed me so much. Every fire I found myself in, it was somebody else in there with me. That's why you didn't get burnt. <laughs> That's why you didn't get consumed because it was somebody else in there with you. You crossed through rivers that other folks drowned in because it was somebody there that was holding back the seas. You don't know how blessed you are. I may not have the house. I may not have the car. I may not have the money I want. I may not have the job that I really want to do. But man, I am here and that is a blessing. I am here. I'm not consumed. I'm not, I'm not gone under. I am here to give my own story. Oh. I just tell you, I, I am, I'm a worshiper at heart before I can preach, you know, because my preaching came out of my worship. Oh, it's a sweet, it's a sweet spirit in here, y'all. Can you feel it? I say it's a sweet spirit in here. I'm 
getting ready to go to the word of God. But I want you to tell the Lord, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm hungry for more. Don't say it because I'm really telling you to say it. I really want you to mean it. Say, Lord, I'm hungry for more. I'm, I'm hungry for more. of your time that's what I want to talk about tonight I want to talk about being hungry and, uh, being hungry for more thank y'all for letting me have that moment I, I want to talk about uh, being hungry if y'all don't mind can I turn these lights on just I want to see some faces I want to see some folks that's hungry yes. You know, <laughs> some of y'all probably really are hungry. <laughs> That's right. I, I promise you, I'm going to get out of here and get out of your way so we can all get some natural food. But I want to give you this little spiritual food and then I'll come back on it tomorrow night and uh, we'll finish it up. I just want to kind of give us a little something, but tomorrow night I'll finish it. I, I want to thank God for Pastor uh, Jonathan Abels, my brother, in his absence. And his lovely wife, Lady Abels. Can y'all bless the Lord for them if you don't mind? Amen. I, uh, I thank God for his heart and his spirit and the things that God has set in motion through him. Amen. And the people that he has been called to. Amen. I'm just excited. Is that all right? I also want to thank God for uh, Pastor Kirksey and his wife that led praise and worship. I thank God for them. Amen. And it's good to have people that you can have in your place in your absence. And so they're doing a wonderful and great job. Thank God for that amazing praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. You know, I, you know, I love that song that you led. It really, it really ministered to me because it made sense. It gave me some language to what be going on. I'm, I'm in the fire, but I ain't getting burned. And I'm going through the river, and yet I'm not drowning. And I look around me, other folks getting burning fires, other folks drowning in rivers, but I'm coming through it. And it's simply because it's another person in there with me. He's not a thing. He is a literal person. And I thank God for the person of Jesus Christ. I lastly, I, I, I tell you, I don't have enough hands, as I tell everybody. I don't have enough hands to bless God for the gift that he's given to me. But can y'all help me bless the Lord for my beautiful wife? <laughs> Latonya, we are, uh, last time we came here, we were just newly married. Well, we are approaching one year. We are like... 14 days from a year so amen we, we thank God I um I was sitting here and I was kind of meditating about what I wanted to talk about tonight and I remember having conversation with uh brother Abel's before at the toward the end of the year and he was asking me about well, what is the Lord saying about um this year that's coming up 2023 and we was conversing. And one of the things that he brought out was that this would be the year of the hungry. Uh, that this is the year of tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, right? Look like we done heard from the same Jonathan, right? And so I wanted to stay in touch with what he's been doing and what he's been saying and saying nothing different. As I was meditating on it, I began to think about the word hungry. I began to think about the, the word hunger. Well, before I got over into that, I, I've been telling people all this week, I want you to put your hands on yourself and make this declaration over yourself. Say, I am different. I am called to be different. Say this, I am not normal. You need to know that you ain't normal. And ain't no sense in you trying to be normal. God didn't call for you to live a normal life. 
He called for us to live a Christ-like life. Christ ain't normal. And if you're going to live a Christ-like life, you have to accept the idea that I will not be normal. As a matter of fact, I don't like normal. And I pray that God will make you so uncomfortable with normal that it will agitate and frustrate you. That it will make you say, I can't stand to be normal. I want to be abnormal. I want to be extraordinary. Okay? You don't realize, but I, I want to help you to understand that everything that you have gone through, everything that you have faced, everything that you have encountered in your life, God is not wasting a bit of it. God is going to use every single thing that God that has a, that has been allowed into your life. He's going to use it to make you an answer for somebody else. This is what the scripture means when he says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a few things. He didn't say good things. He said all things are going to work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So here's what I need you to say about yourself. Put your hand on yourself again and say, self, I am a solution to somebody's problem. The problems you have encountered were not by, they were not for you. They were for someone else that you have not encountered yet. You are a solution and you are a answer to somebody's problem. I told my wife right before I left the room, I was reading in one of my notes. In elementary school, they teach us to add and Around high school level, they begin to teach us algebra. Elementary, we're taught to add. High school, we're taught algebra. Addition shows us the problem looking for an answer. Algebra shows us an answer looking for a problem. Say that again. Addition. Adding, it teaches us that it is a problem looking for an answer. In algebra, they switch that thing and it shows us an answer that is looking for a problem. You think you are a problem looking for a solution. When in all actuality, you are an answer looking for a problem. I feel good already. Amen. You're going to be placed. Why? You're going to be placed in situations where people are going to look for look to you to be their answer, rather than being their problem. Now, what this is doing is changing us from being lazy Christians to having to grow up to be mature Christians. That it can't all be about me, 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 my, 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 my. I feel good. Help me, Jesus. You're going to be placed in situations to see will you, to, for other people to see you as their answer. Don't argue with them. And don't let their insecurities talk you out of it. Don't allow your own insecurities to talk you out of it. Moses was, a, Moses was an answer to a problem. The people had been crying about, I want deliverance. I want to come out of this. And God selected this one man by the name of Moses. Moses was insecure about himself because, number one, he couldn't talk. So you're going to let me lead a people and I can't even talk. God isn't looking at your insecurities as much as he's looking at his ability through you to, do a, to be an answer for somebody else. Say Amen. So then, really, money is not necessarily a problem like you think it is. Because when you decide to become an answer or a solution, instead of praying for money, change your prayers to say, Lord, make me an answer. And then you'll start walking in the grace that Abraham had where he said, where God told him, I'm going to make you a blessing to be a blessing. 
It's, it, we, we're about to walk in something different. I'm praying, Lord, send me $100. Lord, send me whatever. And our prayers are beneath what God is wanting us to pray about. You praying for money, and God saying, I need you to pray about a solution. Because when I make your solution, $100 is going to come out of you like the ATM. See, y'all ain't got faith. Y'all sitting here. When you become a solution, money ain't a problem. Why? Because I am going to answer a crisis. I am going to answer a problem. I'm going to be a solution to an issue. Say amen. amen. So then there's this thing that comes about called hunger. Give me 15 minutes and I'm done. Hunger is actually a sign of spiritual health. Hunger is actually a sign that you are in good health. In the natural, uh, we know that it is something wrong when a child loses his appetite. When you notice a child not eating, you become worried. Oh, we need to go to the doctor because this child is not eating. If we have that mentality in the natural about a person who loses their hunger, how much more should we be concerned when we see our in Christ that's no longer hungry? It's going to get a little deep. Because one of the most challenging things as a Christian, as a believer, is learning how to be full and hungry at the same time. <laughs> because in the natural, you know, when you're full, you're no longer hungry. But in the kingdom, we have to learn how to be full and yet be hungry at the same time. Because when you reside in a place of blessing, when you reside in a place where God is blessing you, one of the things that is required is to remain in a place of hunger. To do this requires humility. Everybody say humility. humility. Watch this. Because... Humility or hunger actually is a, is, a, is a sign or evidence of hunger. Because hunger says there's a need. Hunger says I'm in need. Humility says I'm dependent on something. Humility says I can't do it on my own. When you're hungry, you're actually saying, ma'am, you're actually saying, sir, that Lord, I need you to fill me. I can't feed myself. Thank you for spam. Thank you for collard greens. Thank you for pig feet, oxtails, and all of that other stuff. But that stuff can't feed me with the stuff that I need you to feed me with. One of the phenomena about hunger is that in the natural, you get hungry by not eating. Just don't eat. Let me keep you to 12 o'clock and you watch how hungry you become. But in the kingdom, watch this, you get hungry by eating. In the natural, I get hungry by not eating. In the kingdom, I get hungry by eating. Man, I feel so good. Because when I get exposed to stuff, when I get exposed to kingdom stuff, it makes me hungry for it. <sighs> If you saw right now a miracle take place, like a blinded eye become open, or like a, like a limb grow out, or, or like you see cancer literally dry up in a person, you know what that thing going to turn around and do for you? It's going to make you hungry to want to see more of it. Look at somebody say, ain't normal. Exposure increases the hunger of the believer. If I get around and see people being blessed, then there's something in me that's awakened that says I can't stay like this. Because if my brother can have it, if my sister can have it, and the, the scripture declares that he's, the, he's of no respect of persons, why can't I have it? Can I teach like I feel? I would say preach, but it's a Tuesday night. 
you, you get a person that's walking, that has to walk everywhere. They see somebody with a bike. You know what it's going to do? Make them say, ooh, I want to ride a bike. I got to get me a bike. And you get a person that's on a bike, and they see somebody with a car. You know what's going to happen? They're going to say, ooh, I need to get in a car. I'm going to buy me a car. You get somebody that get in a car, and they drive on a plane, ride on a plane. You know what they're going to say? I need to get me a plane. I, I need to ride me a jet. Because exposure increases the hunger that you have for a thing. Jesus was very adamant about exposing the disciples to stuff because he wanted them to be hungry enough to want it because if you're not hungry, you ain't going to get nothing. That's why your grandmother, that's why mama would tell your closed mouths, don't get fed. You want it, you got to, um, you got to hunger for it. And you get hungry for it, not by starving yourself, by, but by eating it. We're getting ready to go to a particular scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 8, real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm going to really dig into this a little bit more tomorrow. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I don't know if they'll have it up there, but I'm going to go to it in my. Is this good? Because Jesus cooked this up. And uh, I want to go back and eat some more. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Uh, listen to what it says. And he humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you knew not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make you to know that man do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doeth man live. Wait. He humbled you and suffered you to hunger, and he fed you with, with, with manna. You know what manna is? That word manna means, what is it? It, it, it was, what is it? God fed them with, what is it? Oh, this is going to get good. I gave you what is it to eat, and even after I gave it to you, you still didn't know what it was. This is manna. I fed you with manna. I fed you with a mystery. You've been eating a mystery and didn't even know it because what I'm trying to get you to know is there's some stuff that God will leave in mystery form you ever been asking God Lord why maybe I'm by my own self have you ever just sat down and asked the Lord why about certain stuff why about certain things why this why that why 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 and God never seems to tell me why God, because if you can eat the mystery and learn to trust him through the mystery, it'll take you to a place of greater revelation. Sometimes you got to eat the mystery to get to a place of greater revelation, which means you may not have the explanation you asked for, but you'll have the explanation that you need. You ain't know what this was. Your daddy and them didn't know what this was. Pastor couldn't really explain to you what it was because I'm not trying to get you to be dependent upon a man. I'm trying to get you to be dependent and trust me. Because pastor didn't authorize your life. Mama and daddy, although they came together and had you and conceived you, they did not author your life. I did. And I need you to trust me even in times when it's mysterious. Even in times when you don't know what's going on. Even in times when it hurts, you're crying, and it don't seem like I'm not getting any answers. You got to learn how to trust him even when you can't trace him. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's the real objective is learning how to trace God when I can't sense him. Job said it like this, I look for him on my left. 
I looked for him on my right. I could not find him anywhere that I looked. But then he turned around and he said, but I know that my redeemer lives. You can't talk like that if you don't trust the man. You can't talk like that if you don't believe in the man. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Can I talk like I feel? So then when you learn how to trust God through the different seasons and the stages of your life, because can I tell you, life going to take you through seasons. Even if you live a, a little bit of time, you can understand that life is going to take you through seasons. Life is going to take you through transitions. You're going to have curves. You're going to have bumps. You gonna ha Lord have mercy. You're going to have hills. You're going to have valleys. But you got to learn to trust God, not in some seasons, but you got to learn to trust him in every season. And you know who the devil is really afraid of? He ain't afraid of us churchgoers. He ain't afraid of us on the praise and worship team. He ain't afraid of the people with the microphone in their hand. He's afraid of people that can trust God even when it looked like God ain't nowhere near around. He, can, he is afraid of people that can believe God, that can believe him at his word, even when it looked like God done forgot about what he said. I wish I had a few believers in here that know what I'm talking about, that know that it's been times it looked like God forgot about me, but I still trust in the Lord. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord. <laughs> I trust him. When the doctor give me a bad report, I trust him. When my children are coming home and acting like they don't know God, I trust him. I trust them when they fire me. I trust them when they let me go. I trust them when they take my car. I trust them when they threaten to take my house. I trust them when I don't know where my next meal coming from. I trust God. Can he find some people that are trust him? It's easy to trust when you can see. It's easy to trust when you know. But then sometimes God likes to move you out of your own mental capacity and show you that I'm greater than what you think. I'm greater than what you can see. I'm greater than what you can feel. I'm God. Can't nobody stop me. I'm God. Can't nobody block me. If I want to bless you this way, can't nobody stop me from blessing you. If I want to heal you this way, can't nobody stop me. Somebody shout because he's God. I said he's God in the middle of the night he's God in the morning he's God at night he's God he's God when I feel like it he's God when I don't feel like it he's God See, you can't brag about God too much to a real believer. Some start stirring up on the inside of them. You can't talk about God too much because we get excited. Because it builds some hope in me. It builds some trust in me. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what it feel like. I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Can you touch three people around you and say, I feel like it's going to be all right. Y'all ain't touching nobody. I said, look at about three people and tell them I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right in your family. It's going to be all right in your body. It's going to be all right in your mind. It's going to be all right in your money. Shout hallelujah. It's going to be all right. Because the enemy will make you feel like that, that this season is going to last forever. But I'm here to tell you seasons don't last forever. They come and they go. It's winter right now, but I'm telling you, spring is around the corner. Spring is around the corner. It's going to be spring after a while, but it's going to change too. It's going to become summer. What am I trying to tell you? Be not weary and well do it. Because in due season, it's another season coming around here. In due season, you're about to reap if you faint not, if you doubt not, if you don't. Hallelujah. No, somebody say it's my due season coming around here now. I ain't going to faint. Let me come down. So here we go. Go to the book of Psalms 107. Psalms 107. I probably ain't going to finish all this. 
That's all right. Psalms 107. I'm going to start at verse 4. Listen to what he says. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Stop for a moment because I want to let you know that when you really are hungry, you don't have to have a praise team. When you really hungry, you don't need the musicians. When you really hungry, buddy, you'll learn how to praise God whether they show up or not. Just in case they call out on a Sunday, just in case they call out on a Wednesday, you ain't going to stop my praise because I'm hungry for the Lord. And I know the way that I get feel the way that I get feel is I learn how to praise God so watch this watch this why the question became why does God value hunger because hunger keeps us in a place of humility James said that God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace to the who? Thank you for the five that read your Bible. He said that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. For some reason, God is in love with humble people. Hunger keeps me in a place of humility that keeps me in a place of dependency. If you read Isaiah chapter 29, you'll also understand that hunger causes people to dream. In the natural, you ever went on a fast and in the first couple of days, you dream of big old dinners that you ain't supposed to be eating on your fast? Hunger causes people to dream. Well, likewise, spiritually, hunger causes you to dream it causes you to become passionate about something it causes you to see things that you couldn't necessarily see had you been full and complacent so when you come around people that no longer have a spark that no longer have a drive that's just coming out of religiosity that's just coming out of routine that person needs a that person ain't hungry you can tell people that's hungry and you can tell people who's not hungry Based on their attitudes. Because hungry people stay in a place where they are always reaching for stuff. They're always hungering and yearning and desiring and craving for something more than what they are experiencing. This is why I told you from the beginning to say that I'm not normal. Hunger pulls you out of convenience. It would be more convenient for me to be at home right now, getting ready for work tomorrow. But hunger has pulled me out of my convenience because I need something to fill me because I'm hungry. You're not going to be hungry and convenient at the same time. Hunger will inconvenience you. You ever been hungry and Somehow in the middle of the night, you wake up and you got this growl going on at two in the morning. Good sleep, but that hunger pain. Hunger knows how to inconvenience you. Bring you out of your comfortable place. Bed feel good. Pillow feel nice. Turn it on the other side. It's cool. But I can't get rid of that hunger. I got to go put something in there. Because of hunger. And God is saying, can you learn how to be full and hungry at the same time? Can you learn, in other words, to be content with what you got, but yet long for something more? I'm not jealous of the next person. I'm content with what I have. But at the same time, I'm hungry for something more. Watch this. Because the question becomes, here's David. David is, a, David is, 
a very well-off man. He's not just king. He has galores and galores of money. And yet David says, Lord, my soul is in need. I am needy. My soul is break. I need, I need, I need. Now, this is a very rich man. And he says, I need, I need, I need. You, got the, you have the access to handle any need that you want, David. And yet he's saying to God, I need, I need, I need. Then the question became to me, how much is too much? How much is too much? Well, sis, I looked at it and, and, and I learned that whatever amount that causes you no longer to trust God is too much. For somebody, it may be $1,000. For somebody, it may be a million. For some, it may be 100 It's not the amount as much as it is the relationship to it. Lord, I want a husband. How much is too much? If that husband is going to put you in a position to no longer trust God, that's too much for you right now. If this job, as, 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 as uh, appealing as it may be, if it's going to put you in a place where I no longer trust God, that's too much. Whatever is going to put me in a place where I no longer trust God, that's too expensive. Let me keep moving. Psalms 107, now watch this at verse 33. He, he, and while y'all do that, I'm, I'm also going to look at one more scripture, and that's in Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 53. And then I'm going to read both of them together, and then we're going to get out of here. Chapter 33, he turneth rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground. And a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Stop. So, uh, Luke 1 and 53 says this. He, uh-oh. As a matter of fact, I want y'all to go to Luke 1 and 53. We're going to read that all together. I'm hold my spot while y'all go over there. The scripture says, oh, all right, before we go there, y'all on it now. <laughs> he turneth rivers, Psalms 107, 33. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Stop. He's turning rivers into wildernesses. Rivers is, is, is blessedness. Wildernesses are humbling experiences. Why are you turning the rivers into a, a, into a, uh, into a wilderness? And why are you turning a fruitful land into barrenness? Here's why. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. I stopped. I looked at that word wickedness. I said, Lord, what are they doing wicked? They are no longer, this is the wicked part, you in all this blessing. You, you got rivers, you, you got fruitful lands, you got water springs. And what has happened is it has caused you to no longer be in a place of hunger. God said in the book of Deuteronomy like this, when I bless you, be careful not to forget me. I'm telling you this because there are about 10 of y'all that's getting ready to walk into a blessed place. And the Lord says, when you get there, don't forget me. You're about to be blessed beyond measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. When you get there, don't forget. 
I hope somebody received that. Don't you forget him when you get in your blessed place. Don't you forget him when he start prospering you. Don't you forget him when he start making you something. But watch this. Luke 1 and 53. I want us to read this together. Read it with some, with some triumph in your voice. Read this. He done what? And what has he done with the rich? Y'all, y'all miss what I just said. He hath filled the hungry with good things. And he hath, and the rich he has sent empty away. You trying to be rich? Lord, make me hungry. Y'all missed it. Lord have mercy. I ain't trying to get rich. I'm trying to get hungry. Look at somebody and say, you hungry yet? I ain't trying to be rich. I'm trying to be hungry. Because when you get hungry, you get filled with good things. He said, no good thing will I withhold from them. Now watch this. Here I am. Back there. Look at this Psalms 107. Watch this last little part. Verse 35. He turneth, now watch this. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. Now this is what he does with the, with the hungry. He, he fills the hungry with good things. Verse 36. And there he maketh the hungry dwell. that they may prepare a city for habitation. I need you to know the strength of your life is hunger. The strength of your life is being hungry. The strength of your life is being hungry. He makes the hungry dwell there. In other words, he can trust the destiny and the future of a city to the hungry. He can trust the destiny of El Dorado, El Dorado to the hungry. He can trust the future of the city to the hungry. Please don't be deceived and think that the devil just have his way in the city. When the hungry show up, I said when the hungry show up, that's all God waiting for. It's just a few hungry people that can turn a city upside down. Y'all ain't talking here. He, all he need, he took 12 men to turn one city upside down. What you think God can do with all of us? One can chase a thousand. Two, ten thousand. You can't do nothing with us. Not when we get hungry. He can trust the future and the destiny of your family. If you get hungry enough, stand to your feet. I'm done. He can trust the future of this city to the hungry. This thing is bigger than just me and you. The impact that can be placed upon this city can be placed because we're hungry. The future and the destiny of your family, of your last name, your bloodline can be entrusted to you if you become hungry enough. You ain't seen the fullness of what God wants to do with you. But he brought me all the way from Alabama to Arkansas to tell you to get hungry. If you get hungry, you're going to taste of the goodness of the Lord. You're going to taste of his goodness in your family. You're going to taste of his goodness in your marriage. You're going to taste of his goodness in your children. You're going to taste of the goodness of the Lord if you get hungry. I prophesy to this ministry that there's a hunger that's coming on you 
and you're going to learn how to be full and hungry at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lift those hands all in this room. And I want you. Yes, oh, thank you. Yeah, there you go. All right. I want you for the next few moments just begin to ask God to give you an appetite to make you hungry. Hungry for more. Thank you for what you've done, but I'm hungry for more. Thank you for what you've made happen, but Lord, I'm hungry for more. Because you can trust the destinies and the futures of cities and families and to the hungry. Oh, God. Make it happen for me. Make it happen for me. I'm humble before you, Lord, because I need you. I'm not too proud that I can do it on my own. I'm not too proud that I can make stuff happen on my own. I need you. Oh, Father. I want to be hungry like I've never been before. I want to be thirsty like I've never been before. You said in your word, hallelujah. You said in your word that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall. It's not a might. It's not a maybe. It's not I don't know. But Father, we shall be filled. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Lord, I'm in need. I got stuff, but Lord, I'm in need. You've blessed my life, but Lord, I'm in need. I'm in need. I'm in need. I'm in need of more of you, Lord. I'm in need of more of you. Come on, I dare you to open your mouth real quick for the next 30 seconds and I dare you to just begin to love on him. Come on, begin to tell him how much you need him. Come on, begin to tell him how much you need him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, tell him how much you need him. I know you got a lot of stuff. I know you got money. I know you got degrees. I know you got this. I know you got that, but Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Oh, I can't make it on my own. I need you, God. Oh, Lord, I love you. Oh, Jesus, I appreciate you. I'm content, but Lord, I want more. I'm content, but Lord, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I prophesy a hunger to overtake your life. I prophesy a hunger to overtake you like never before. I prophesy a hunger to overtake you, to want and to yearn for more than what you've ever seen, more than what you ever imagined. For the scripture declares that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what I got in store for you. I got so much in store for you, but I need you to become hungry for it. I got so much in store for you, but I need you to become hungry for it. I want you to get thirsty for it. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen anything yet. Come on, I need you to get hungry for it. Oh, I want to do so much with you, but I need you to get hungry for it. Oh, Lord, help us. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. He's here. My Jesus is here. My Jesus is here so much I want to change in your family but I want you to get hungry for it so much I want to do through your your family your bloodline but I want you to get hungry for it I want you to get hungry for it come on I want you to get hungry for it oh God you ain't seen nothing yet you you ain't seen all that I got in store for you you ain't seen all that I got prepared for you your eyes ain't seen it your ears ain't heard it and it ain't even entered into your heart all that I got 
but I need you to get hungry for it. Lord, give me hunger. Lord, give me hunger. Lord, give me hunger. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, fill me with hunger. Oh God, oh Jesus, oh how I need you, oh how I need you, oh how I need you Lord, I can't make it without you, oh how I need you Father, oh, 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 it's not about me Lord, but it's about what you want to do through me, it's about what you want to make happen through me, Father, that's why I'm getting hungry for you, because you want to do something through me, you want to do something through me, you want to do something through my family, family. You want to do something through my marriage, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Oh, God. That's what I need. That's what I need. I want to be hungry for you, Lord. I want to be hungry for you. I want to be hungry for you. Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't go in last season's hunger. Lift your hands. But I need a new hunger. I need a new appetite. God. It's not by accident that the Lord has ordered your steps here tonight. But truly the Lord wants to give you a visitation of his spirit. And he wants to give you a visitation of who he is. You're about to become so hungry for God. There's about to be a fire that's going to be lit on the inside of you in the days to come. And God says to tell you that I'm going to make you so hungry for me and so hungry for my presence. It's going to be so that you're not even going to be asking for blessings. You're not even going to be asking for things. You're just going to be asking for more of him. But God is going to prosper your life because of your hunger. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to. I need your hand. He's going to prosper your life because of your hunger. Come on. I need you to bless the Lord come on I need you to bless the Lord I'm done but father we're just hungry for you father we're just hungry for you oh yes we're just hungry for you we're just hungry for you Lord hallelujah we're hungry for you father I thank you that this hunger is going to unleash another level of worship in him this hunger that you're filling him with Lord is going to cause a worshiper that he's never seen radical 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 that's the word I hear radical 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 in the name of Jesus I see so radical even like David that David danced out of his clothes David danced on it shamedly David gave it all he got David gave it all he got unrehearsed on uh, not even coerced that same anointing is going to rest on you that same anointing is going to rest on you prepare yourself for the worshiper to come forth like a mighty roaring lion like a mighty roaring lion and as you open your mouth demons tremble as you open in your mouth demons tremble in the name of Jesus come on I need y'all to get hungry shout in here give him a praise come on give him a praise come on give him a praise Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're doing. And he that had begun a good work shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, I dare you to look around to about two or three people and say, let's get hungry, let's get hungry, let's get hungry. Tell them, let's get hungry, let's get hungry, let's get hungry. Well, praise God. Have you been blessed tonight? Now, go get a bunch of people. Bring them back tomorrow night. The thing about the glory of God, it only increases. The river only widens. And everything will re live where the river flows. So bring some friends, bring family tomorrow night. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Y'all be blessed.